Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. We're going there. Yeah. Oh, that was that was a slow delay. Actually, I actually had that up there before the other one. So Hello, was, everyone. You, you realize he said the most important people in the RV industry. That was that was me. Right, right, right. No, that was the most important person. What are you? What are you still eating? Supper? Popcorn. Popcorn. We've so we're we 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 popcorn. That's great. We're live. Here's what we have to do. We're live. Yeah, we, we have should to say hello, everyone, and welcome once again to RVing in New England. My name is John DePietro. I'm here with my co-host Bob Zogami. And we are brought to you by code to press button, Seacoast RVs, where we just spent a few wonderful hours last week. I was there Saturday. Bob was there Sunday at their open house. We got to talk to the people from Crop. We got to talk to the people from Winnebago. We got to talk to the fine folks from Elevation. And um, it was great during their open week, open house weekend. And um, you know what? It was a great time. Family fun on Route 1 in Saco. I mean, you know, it, it was a great time, even though we had rain and uh, some little cold weather. We had steady traffic for those days. And I'm continually amazed that they had, uh, at this point in the season, 30. What do you got? Oh, popcorn. Where'd you get that? Did you get that? Um, oh, is that, is that the kettle corn from Seacoast? Well, it's like kettle corn. It's, it's from Trader Joe's. The only problem is... Some is spicy, some is smoky, some is salty. Some of them I don't like. Oh. So. Well, you know, the, the kettle corn at Seacoast, I got to talk to Kenny when he comes back from his Yukon hunt, uh, wasn't as good as when Kenny cooks it. No. Nope, not at all. Well, that was the Elevation guys. Huh? The Elevation guys cooked that popcorn. Oh, they did on Sunday. Oh, they did on Saturday too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I should say burnt that popcorn. But we, ha we haven't had any uh, reports back from the Yukon, so I don't think Kenny's going to get anything on this uh, particular hunt. But with the, uh, with the 50 plus animals that are decorating his parts and accessory store, I don't think he needs uh, any more. Not at all. Not at all. So hey, we, we, should a, tell. we got a fun night tonight. Uh, we do. We have a Fred. great show. Well, then we got this guy, Willie Miller. So. So the secret, you know, John, you know how much Willie talks. So we got to we got to figure out a way to. We got to talk while we can. We gotta, we, Why don't we do this? Every word in while we can. Willie has a special guest with him. Actually, Willie's got got nerve because he's bringing his boss on with him. Well, that doesn't uh, go the other way. His boss is bringing Willie on with him. Uh, I don't know, but Willie's uh, Willie's our contact. We haven't met Fred well, yeah, yet. Well, Why don't we do this well, before we go know, to Willie and Fred? You know, what we could do say, is we say could hello bring, to our audience. Yeah, but you know, what we could do we could bring Fred up and just leave leave Willie in the green room to eat all the steak and lobster himself. Well, he probably would be happy to do that. He would probably do that. But uh, I'll tell you, we, we, we haven't seen Willie for a while. So I, you, did you get your marching orders, Willie? You got, if we have to we have to lasso you and uh, rein you in here. But uh, would you like to introduce your boss? And maybe that'll let you keep your job another week or so. What? I hope so. so Hold on. Wait, wait. Hold on. Will you introduce Willie for those people who don't know who Will? Everybody, I don't have to introduce Willie. Everybody knows who Willie no, is. Everybody knows Willie. Yeah, we okay. don't have to introduce Willie. So yeah. yes, I am honored to introduce to both of you the bad boys from Boston, as Mr. Getter likes to refer to you both, uh, right. Mr. Fred Hirschberger, uh, my boss, who I am honored to uh, take on this opportunity and work for. Okay, so. So, Fred, with all the people in the RV industry <laughs> good and tired, that are available, what what made you go for Willie? I think you already uh, uh, said quite a bit of it. Everybody <laughs> knows him, and uh, um, his skill set is perfect for the job that we have him in. Tell us, tell us about your background and, and the time you've been. You got, you got another question to Pedro. Well, no, I want Fred to, exactly, but see, Zagami and I, we're 1,500 miles apart. We, we never rehearse. We don't, we're going to ask the same question because I said, Fred, 
tell us about your background because I did a Google search on you, and the only thing I come up with are obituaries for Fred Hershberger's <laughs> all over the country. <laughs> I didn't know there was more than two of us, but yeah, well, you know, you're alive and well. Tell us, um, tell us a little bit about your background in the industry. We are. Um, I actually been around for a little bit. You know, I got started in uh, 1991 with Cobra Industries. So uh, um, in this area, Elkhart, Indiana, I mean, you're going to you get out of college and, and you're going to stay in this area and you're going to build them or, or work for a rep, you know, in the uh, uh, supply industry or work for the manufacturing and the sales industry. And I was fortunate enough to have family uh, members that were in sales within the industry, um, Tom Kaler. And he brought me in as a sales trainee at Cobra when Jeff Babcock actually uh, uh, moved into his first sales role. So yeah. Jeff so, kind of took me under his wing, and that's where I got started in the industry. And um, it's nice to see you got your job the same way so many people in Massachusetts got their jobs. Yeah, nepotism. <laughs> 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 you know, Will and I actually talk about that a little bit, you know, so uh, we're really excited about our future. But, well, you know, I was there for a few years and then um, actually went back to school, worked on my master's and uh, that only lasted about a semester and then got into truck conversion sales, um, you know, back in the uh, mid to late 1990s and Pete Recchio called me out of the blue one day who I worked with at Cobra and he was at Dutchman at the time and he wanted to talk to me about a position over at Dutchman and set up an interview with Cole Davis and himself and Glenn Sylvester. And they, after the interview, they told me to follow back up on uh, Friday and Cole and Pete had just been fired. So, you know, that was very short lived, but Cole went on to start Keystone and, I became the first sales rep at Keystone working for Bill Fennick. And um, I spent, you know, all my years there up until 2008 when I lost my job there. So, you know, the downturn closed down some plants. Everybody associated with those plants lost their job, including me. And it was shortly after Forest Rivers acquisition at Coachman. So I ended up going to work for Coachman. Um, Mike, uh, Turlip brought me in there, uh, worked with him for about three years and that opportunity at Winnebago came across when Winnebago purchased Sunnybrook. So, so you didn't have to move to uh, Forest City. I didn't have to move to no. Forest City, visited Forest City, um, on a number of occasions. Um, but great opportunity with Coachman came back and, and Mike Turlip wanted me to come back as a GM over the fifth wheel division. And so I've been with them since 2012 up until about a month ago when Pete legal called me up and asked me if I would take over some of Don Gundon's old divisions. So since Don you're, retired, you're a towable guy through and through Fred. I've never been motorized. Always towable. <laughs> Which truck conversion company did you work with? Centurion vehicles. Yeah, they did. They did some beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. A lot of chassis alteration, uh, pickup trucks, and custom, it was a lot of fun. Custom paint jobs. They were. They were. The, yeah. They were the Cadillac. The, um, the reason I asked you about what you had on your mantle is because in Massachusetts, um, candle pin bowling is big, and right over your left shoulder, it sure looks like a candle pin. And we've got a lot of people. We've got the good Sam people that are all out in uh, Greenfield, Massachusetts. They're setting up for their Memorial Day event that they get about 150, 200 trailers at. And um, are they? Uh, let's see. Let's see who we have. Oh, Aud oh, I thought I got scared there. I thought Audrey was the first one on tonight. Oh, no. Gail. Says. All right. So Gail says. Gail says good evening, all. Uh, any up, update on Steve's uh, Facebook issues? I, I haven't found anything, Gail, but if you find anything, let me know. Audrey, Audrey was early, right up there on the second slot. Mass Good Sam, is that probably Joe and Rhonda? Hello from Greenfield. Close, yeah. Big, big Memorial Day celebration out there. Dante, saw Dante up at Seacoast uh, on Sunday, and uh, he's in there. He's back home for the summer. Audrey says popcorn. 
Is it going to be that kind of show? Yep. Well, yeah, but Audrey, I, I could never have popcorn with Jack Daniels. Yeah, that, that would ruin it. It's supposed, to, <laughs> it's supposed to have that would eliminate it. I couldn't ruin my Jack Daniels that way. Not that so Fred, and, Fred this, this show is the only one of its kind in the country that has a live audience that can participate. Yeah. We are 100% live. And um, Estelle, I assume you know. Estelle's in New Hampshire. Walter Swenson. Now, that's interesting. Have you have you already left for South Carolina, Walter? Or are you you're taking it? Because he doesn't like to drive at night. I thought he might go through the night given Memorial Day weekend. Frank Palange found a way on. Is that Willie? Hey, Frank. 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 Frank called me before, before the show. We talked, Willie. He says, I want to see Willie. I can't get my TV. How am I going to get the program on here? <laughs> So Willie, you know, so Frank is running around in a beautiful DRV. Frank, Bob, got you on type. Got on you the big on, screen. Got you on type on the big screen. I'm not sure I follow that. Bye, so he's, so he's got he, you on the big screen. See, they, they called us. The, the, the group was so concerned that they would miss, miss the show. He called me from the campground saying, hey, I got to get the show on the big screen. We got a lot of campers here. Walt Burns from Easy Care. Go get him, Willie, and congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that, now he has to really work for a job, uh, Walter. So we'll see that. Good, Sam. Ryan Hadley, good evening, guys. Howdy. Hey, Fred, what do you do on uh, remote service if you don't have dealer coverage? Because Ryan is one of the best mobile technicians in the world, but he covers the Northeast. He's a member of NERVDA. And he does a lot of uh, warranty work and on-the-spot mobile stuff when companies get uh, out of whack or don't have anybody. Gotcha. And, well, no, Donna has surgery in the AM. Then he's going to Georgia later in the day. Frank yep. says, how do I block out to Pedro on the big screen? <laughs> well, actually, actually you, just, you, you just slipped me a few bucks. <laughs> I, I can make him disappear. Real easy. It wouldn't, it wouldn't cost you much money at all, Frank. Frank, yeah. Frank go up and stand in front of it. Stand in yeah. front of the big screen. Yeah. That's all. That's all. all right. Is Fred so, still with us? Yeah. I am still with yeah. you. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about their units. Uh, yeah. How about we spend a little time talking about River Ranch, a little time talking about Columbus. You know, the way, the way I look at these – and tell me if I'm wrong, but I think it's what gets Willie excited too. Is this is one of the best kept secrets in in the industry? These are outstanding products. They're well built. And what do I have in New England? I got two dealers in all of New England. Both of them are Camping World, Camping World in uh, Wyndham, and Camping World in West Boylston, right the, across the street from where I am. Yeah, the the dealers are missing the boat. So, Willie, you want to give us your strategy because the other guy is going to have to put these on the street. Sure. Am I allowed to talk, John, as you're You, you are board? now, but if, if, I'll tell you, <laughs> Willie, watch it, though, because if, if the Petro gives you one of these, you're in deep slot. you gotta, you got to you know, watch that. Willie, just tell him the same stuff you told Fred during the interview. <laughs> I gave Fred a hug. Well, well. You, give everybody, <laughs> you give everybody a hug. Are we supposed to feel good about bad about that? You know, I think, honestly, um, and I'm not going to get long-winded, you know, both you two, Bob, John, you guys have been so supportive of me for the three years I've been in this industry. We're starting to figure out why. <laughs> you know, here, here's here's what was, like, blew me away. The amount of phone calls I received, not about the opportunity, not about the product, not about, you know, oh, you're a big GM, you're going to be working. It's, you're working for Fred Hirschberger, probably the best example of servant leadership in this industry. As you guys kind of said, um, always pulls himself away, but the amount of support, uh, it's just, it's been incredible. Product wise, you guys told me, am I gonna go work for a company that, you know, loads up the bag with all the supply chain and all the purchase parts we put on? You know, Fred and I had a conversation for about three hours and he talked about three things, doing more for owners, doing more for dealers, doing more for our suppliers and doing more for the plant. Everything was based upon how we're gonna serve people, very little about the product. 
So he said, hey, why don't you meet me? So he and I had a conversation. Then I, I met him. We looked at the product. I said, this is very, very unique. Instead of talking about, you know, the frameless windows, the pin box, solid steps, you know, everything that everybody talks about, you take all of the things that we purchase out of it. Columbus is the only fifth wheel manufacturer in the industry that has an 84 inch ceiling height. So that's seven feet uh, in the upper deck of every floor plan that is patented to Columbus and River Ranch. River Ranch is widely known as a showstopper at RV shows across the country because it has more pass through storage with the well-known feature of those motorhome style side hinge slam latch doors. Not the so you thing. have a product that you're not dependent on selling or pitching or a story that's predicated on purchase parts that everybody has access to. We have a patented story <clears throat> that nobody else has. And the only opportunity was with Columbus <clears throat> over the years, just like any journey, it encountered rough waters. It encountered a fog. So, Willie, let me, let me let me stop you there for a minute. I want to show you something because these are the things that attracted me to it, and I think that a lot of our fans don't know. That's what a seven foot height looks like in the bedroom of a fifth wheel. And and I'm not so sure that, that there's that many people out there to understand about that. And explain how that either came about or why that is the number is that the number one reason why people would buy a uh, Columbus fifth wheel. Well, again, everything being predicated on stat surveys, you know, you would look at, you know, what we produce annually in our sales and you would say, hmm, why isn't that appealing? There just wasn't a clear direction and focus of taking this great product that's patented to market to our dealer network. And just, there was just, like I said, through the evolution to where we're at today, what led Fred to getting in this role and what led Fred to, you know, approaching me with this opportunity. We have yet to really put horsepower behind that story. Very simple. It's very easy to say to dealers, hey, you know, everybody has a fifth wheel. Why Columbus? It's the only fifth wheel in the industry that has a seven foot ceiling height. And from that 84 inch ceiling height, every doorway is 78 inches. So it is the most residential feel. So without having to talk about anything else, that alone hasn't even had a chance to really get out there and really receive feedback. But why I think it's unique, nobody else has it. Well, you know, when the, when the River Range came out, I did a slot on uh, rolling on TV with it. And that paint job, you, you can't see all of it, but that's a full basement storage. And you walk up into the unit and what's really amazing is what's underneath it. This and this are the basement of the motorhome. The whole thing is that. And then you just, everything's flat floor. So you, you look, now this is a fifth wheel. So if you look deep into the show, into the floor, you got a flat floor right into the bedroom up front. And you, you talk about residential. So you got, you got two of the units on the market that have more residential features. So how, how are you going to get the dealers to talk about that and how are you going to push this out? But Fred, before, before you guys go into that, we had a couple, we had a question here with what umbrella does river ranch in Columbus fall under? So, so our audience knows where to go. Let Fred kind of speak to that. It's, it's the uh, Columbus product. Um, so, you know, as far as the umbrella goes, it would be a Palomino product. Um, you know, it, it's sister products with the Puma product, Palomino uh, travel trailer products, the uh, Paws Overland series uh, products, um, if that's what they're asking. Yeah, yeah. So, so Columbus is more of a model than a brand. 
it's it's a brand it's a brand uh we're <clears throat> forest rivers actually you know going through a little bit of you know a a rebranding process you know right mm -hmm. now but um columbus is going to be by forest river um you know puma is pretty much branded itself and palomino is going to be you know branded as palomino by forest river um so it's going to be a forest river product but you know we're we're real close with you know the palomino uh products um with dealers and and so forth in the industry okay all right so um, andrew says we have so many friends that have gone to fifth wheels lately but i totally love traveling in our class a so in that group that you travel with audrey and the 12 um group 10 to 12 rv is how many are in class a's and how many are in fifth wheels ryan hadley says that's a good looking trailer and i like the basement especially when the trailer will need work that's 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 a good point uh speak to that willie yeah, that's another point that i hadn't thought about what does that do for you on the service side the biggest opportunity like i said is just getting the the units in front of those that we serve you know we have right now when fred and i again met he never talked about product he said well i want to show you that product at a later date he said we currently have 3700 committed columbus owners that don't get much engagement with leadership of columbus first and foremost i want you to start talking to them how have we been doing how yeah. is your happiness all of this so when you look at again the exclusive patented design that we have implemented to give you that accessibility, especially with River Ranch, it is true. The entire floor plan has been raised within our patent and every floor plan configuration, you have that entire lower pass through uh, to access should you yeah, need to have some maintenance or utilize for storage. So it is very accessible and good for owners post sale to be able to you know, not have to break their arm to access, you know, any points of entry for any kind of, you know, maintenance process. Well, talk, talk about this point of entry, because correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but when the River Ranch first came out, the one that I reviewed, it had a spiral staircase. And I thought that was that I thought it was cumbersome. I thought that might be a little challenging for some people. But this is obviously your new entry. So you come in and you come up to the floor level. And then at, at that point, you just, it's straight and narrow the whole way through. So you can see the railings there. So, so yeah, so, so, our, so our, our communication with River Ranch is when you walk into it, whether it's that configuration or a rear entry, once you're in the floor plan, from the rear of the coach all the way to the bedroom, there are no steps. So of course you have steps to get into the coach. But typically, what do we see with a fifth wheel, right? Making that transition to the upper deck, whether it's a front kitchen, front living, the bedroom, you know, you got the front double vanity with the dual sinks. You always have a transitional step. What really makes River Ranch unique, once you're in your floor plan, and that's why we have this ranch is considered kind of in a different shopping aisle. Once you're parked and set up, there are no stairs. So to your point, credit to our engineer, Ron Brown, was very intentional of listening to the people that buy the, and live in them. And a lot of that feedback was to your point. Back really? when we did the review, very cumbersome. The stairs were very large. They took up a lot of, you know, livable space. So we shrunk that down, but the transition from the exterior steps, now you have a, like, kind of a base to be a, a pseudo mudroom, take off the shoes. Once you transition to the inside steps and you're in and you close the gate, Whatever the configuration is, there's I've no never steps. heard that. Just say, I've never heard that before. But let me mean? ask a question along those same lines. Do you have different floor plans that will give you a, um, a sleeping area in the uh, the front versus a um, living room area in the front versus a kitchen area in the front? You mean on the river ranch, John? On the one he's talking about, it's all one floor. Yeah. So it, river so. Ranch. So in the spirit of transitioning into new plans, I'm not going to disclose at this time what we have up our sleeves. But I will say no matter the floor plan, if everybody goes online right now, everyone has the most pass-through storage 
and a fifth wheel in the industry. And once you're in, there are no steps, no matter where the bedroom, the kitchen, or the living space is. Okay. Because, you know, Bob and I, when we're at a show, we, we visit so many events that, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, once you're in, you can't tell them apart because everything, you know, the appliances are the same, the colors are the same, that everything's the same. But I don't think I've been in one um, where I've seen one flat floor the entire length yeah. for the living space. Well, it looks like you have a stop on your journey then, John. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> well, all the, really? All so, the way across the street. Right, so, Willie, so, so, Fred, if, if Willie won't tell us what's coming in 2025, if you would like to make the national announcement today on this national program <laughs> and like to tell our fans what you got coming in 25, you you got the uh, you got the microphone. Go for it. I can tell you that product development's my passion, and um, I live and breathe to you know be creative and come out with things that haven't been out before. But um, to sh actually share with you what I'm going to come out with, I can't do that right now. Well, it's a good yeah. try. Yeah. <laughs> we have some we have some good questions. Fred, I don't know if you, you've been on a show like this where we actually take questions from the audience. And the interesting thing is we've been doing this show, what, Bob, almost nine years. We're in the, halfway through our ninth year. Yeah. I think we have the most loyal audience because we're on first but name basis with all of our people that they they take every Wednesday night to um um you know, watch this show. So, Bob, well, why don't we go back said, to? Yeah, like I said, I mean, like I said, Frank Frank called before the show, saying, "Hey, I I got to get the show. Get, you know, got a bunch of campers sitting around the campfire here. Frank, I got I got to take a survey with you, Frank, too, because I haven't seen Audrey report back. But of that group that you got around the campfire, how many of them are astute enough to be drinking Jack Daniels? Yeah, how many of them are already drunk? Yeah. So Frank wants to know what kind of weight can the basement hold? Well, so I, if, if you go to our website, you know, what we're publishing out, you're right around 3,000 pounds, but obviously that's going to depend on the floor plan. Um, but that's where it's at now. But stay tuned uh, as we're excited uh, about what we're going to be unveiling uh, this fall. Okay. Walter had a good point. Flash up to Walters, Bob. Great option for limit. In other words, once you get in, you don't have to fight once you're in it. And usually yeah. you've got two or three steps for the bathroom. Right. Well, at least right. Or, or could could it be a adapt? Well, I, I'm sure you could go third party mm -hmm. if you want to adapt a uh, wheelchair lift. We, we actually had that idea brought up to us a couple of weeks ago. And um, and again, I mean, Will, this is your what 12th day on the job. Yes. <laughs> and and I've been on the job for about four weeks. So uh, um, but we've had that post to us and it is a great job or a great idea because it is the only fifth wheel with the uh, um, flat deck from you know front to rear and, and it's patented. So, uh, um, so that is Fred, a good your, idea. Your tenure here is is really uh, hanging on Willie's success. It is. Not it any is. pressure on either of you. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually surprised I've gotten to talk this much. Yeah, good. Uh, good. Maria's back on. Okay, Frank. Frank being uh, the kind of the mechanic engineering type uh, suspension. suspension system. So with the River Ranch, not Columbus, we are doing the slip roller suspension uh, from Lippert currently. Um, there is, you know, Frank. Obviously, you know, I love you. Uh, since I've gotten into this seat, two things that I've learned very quickly: the amount of emails that Fred can produce and forward to me are unlike anything I've ever seen in my 20 plus year working career. And the amount of suppliers that we have in this amazing industry, I had no idea. What's been so exciting is I think that the timing in which, you know, the announcement came for Fred with his promotion and rightfully earned, um, the impact that he's making in the, in the, you know, introductions that he's made to me of the other divisions. Um, it has been humbling. And the amount of people that love Fred and just want to come meet me and say, oh, so you're the lucky one. I mean, I'm not I'm not really? exaggerating. Really? Every day we've had suppliers really? coming in. The question was about the suspension system. I answered it. 
eight, I said, eight K axles on the uh, river stone or on the uh, river ranch. Yeah. And Audrey says, oh, wait, that's, yeah, yeah. how far are the outside steps to the entry? And what's the top clearance of the rig? That's good questions, Audrey. That is. Start with the easy one, Willie. How big, how tall is it? So for the outside steps, if I understand this, Audrey, we're using, you know, the more ride solid steps going into the coach. So it's standard and in line with every other fifth wheel in terms of dimensional extension to where they land on the ground. Yep. Uh, then once you're inside, instead of a normal fifth wheel without that raised decking, you would obviously be, you know, right in that hallway going into, you know, the very popular rear living floor plan. So for us, once you're in, that's the same across the board. Uh, so okay, there's so no difference. Really, okay, so the the bottom the bottom of the door uh, where the steps come up is going to be the same as any other RV. Correct. But well, once you're in, so once you once you come in, then you have two more steps to the decking of yep. the entire floor plan, and then once you're in, Audrey, no more steps. And the ceiling height from the rear to the front is seven foot ceiling heights. Amazing. Uncle Bernie, you're... Uh, oh, uh, come on, Bernie! Fred, <laughs> Fred we, we do have a dedicated audience, but they do understand also that if they are late to the show, they have to apologize to the others. <laughs> so so Ber Uncle Bernie's a little bit late because he had technical difficulties. All right, Bernie, we'll, we'll forgive you, but at least you uh, apologize. Maria says, sorry I'm late. All right, my time is off since I am watching from Montana. Frank says, we watch Bob and John. I don't know what the... No, we watch Bob and not John. John. No, oh, we oh, wait, wait, wait. I read that too fast. Oh, we yes. watch Bob, not John. Oh, okay. Thank you, Frank. Uh, Mass Good Sam, what is the height of the units after you put the air conditioners on? So in compliance with NHTSA, we should be at 13.7. Well, that's a, that's the max. Some are, some are at 12.6, but... Uh, but yeah, if you got another extra foot than what most other people have, you would be pushing thirteen six. Yeah, 13, and, a, and a lot of and a lot of people have been asking, "Hey, how are you guys doing that with standard ACs? We're using low profile ACs to achieve that compliance." That's that's a good point yeah. too. Have you, have you looked at uh, basement ACs? They're they're getting a little bit better. That new Truma uh, system is in the basement. So again, I can tell you, every day, <laughs> I am. <laughs> Walking in and getting business cards cascaded to me. Hi, Will. Hi, Will. I said, Fred, is this normal? He says, yes. <laughs> Ryan wants to know if the structure on the river ranch, he's got a second comment there, is aluminum or stick built? So it is all aluminum. Um, and that obviously transitions to, you know, the bonded sidewalls. So we're using double Asdale on the sidewall. So normally fifth wheels have the Asdale substrate on the exterior. These are both on the exterior and interior uh, Asdale. Okay. Uh, I don't think I understand this, uh, but that's that's not uncommon that I don't understand something. Not capacity style of suspension. Not capacity, but the style of suspension. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So the, he left ahead, out, Fred. so he left out a comment. Fred, that's your eyes. We, we have 8K. LCI ABS axles, you know, that we install on the uh, um, River Ranch and 7K on the Columbus. And so, for the Columbus brand of product, hi, Bernie, we're using the Moride CRE 3000 currently for 2024 models. Okay. So, Fred, um, I'm, a, I'm presuming for the audience that might not be aware of it, are these considered... Um, top of the line units or these middle they're not starter units they aren't starter they're definitely luxury but um you know we're you know we're going to retail in that you know 70 80 90 you know thousand dollar range and there's a whole nother price point up there within our industry these days that yep. we don't want to participate in um so we're going to be right in that range there but it's uh it's certainly a higher end coach but it's not the highest all right, uh, let's take a deep breath. I'll be right back after our sponsor.
Hey, it's Joe from 1019 POR and John, Joe and Courtney. We're back for another exciting season of Seacoast RV TV. Today's episode is brought to you by the letter W. As in Winnebago, did you know that Seacoast RV is once again the award winner of the Flying W Award, which recognizes Winnebago dealer locations that deliver the highest service excellence and superior customer satisfaction. Don't mean to brag, but we're kind of a big deal. Speaking of Winnebago's, how about the Winnebago Access? Come on inside and take a look around. Modern and spacious interior, easier camp setup with all the deluxe features and an outstanding value, you get it all with the Winnebago Access. You know, with so many different models to choose from though, it can get so scary and confusing. Uh, I feel like I need some, some help. Hi, I'm Amanda. Welcome to Seacoast RV. How can I help you today? Selection, service center, and a huge parts and accessory department. No wonder Seacoast RV is once again Winnebago's Flying W Award winner, their highest honor. Find the perfect RV or towable for you and your family with one stop, Seacoast RV. Easy to find, Route 1 in Saco. Seacoast RV. I'm Jackson. That's right. Cut, cut, cut a little bit off there at the end. Sorry. Uh, so let's talk about, oh, do we have? All right. Good morning. Toby's. What am I doing? Ah. I thought Toby had joined us for there for a minute, but uh, that was that was from the breakfast. Let's talk about New England, Willie. How how can we help you get some more dealers? And and what do you, what do you? And this actually, either Fred or Willie, what do you look for in a uh, Columbus or River Ranch dealer? My boss kind of speak to obviously the portfolio of brands that he's he's managing, and then. Uh... You know, if you guys want to hear me talk, I'll answer. <laughs> We're, so the the uh, uh, Puma product is probably our most mature product brand um, out there. It's been out for 21 years and, you know, has quite the dealer body coast to coast. Um, you know, the uh, Paws product is brand spanking new and, and it's probably a little bit different of a dealer body that would carry that. Um, you know, delivering products into that overland space is not something that every dealer wants to do. I mean, walkthroughs that could be two to three hours long um, yep. because it's a very uh, elaborate build. Because um, you're talking, uh, you know, a little 16 foot non slide travel trailer that can cost 120 grand. Yep. Um, yep. It's amazing, all composite. And uh, the Palomino brands, you know, are really specializing in truck campers. Um, there again, it's not a product that every dealer, you know, wants to um, dive into, you know, most most dealers, you know, travel trailers, fifth wheels and, and motorhomes, um, you know, Columbus, you know, we're, um, you know, you know, we've spent two years, you know, probably the last two years really dialing in this product. And when I took it over about a month ago, um, it was like the greatest thing I had ever seen and never heard of. I mean, it was built across the street from where I was and couldn't believe it. So, um, you know, so when you start thinking about, you know, who do you want to, you know, get that word out? You know, I've known of Will. Um, I've seen Will. We had never met. And, um, you know, we had some great conversations on philosophies and everything else. But, you know, our, our whole goal is, you know, customer experience. I mean, we want to be with that customer um not just in warranty registration you know but after they take the delivery we want to reach out to them connect with them be with them um, so Fred, let, let me let me stop you for a second because yeah. you said something very very interesting there um when you use the term customer there are many manufacturers that consider their only customer the dealer yeah not the end user now obviously you're thinking beyond the end user and still partnering with the person who's using the product on a daily basis. Yeah. I mean, just turn on YouTube today and, and you're going to see, you know, loud and clear um, what customers really uh, desire today is yeah. that connection with the manufacturer. So we want to build that bridge um, to the customer and, 
Will and I and, you know, our service team is actually, you know, reaching out through these forums, connecting. Um, we've got their national rally coming up in August, um, trying to figure out who all's coming, trying to get more people to come. So um, we can plan some pretty, you know, neat activities and, and meet them. Um, but we're actually getting customers on the phone and talking to them and finding out what they like, what they don't like. Um, we, you know, our service team is, is reaching out to customers after they take delivery of a unit, um, just to explain the whole process and let them know that when they do have a, a warranty issue, what to expect and, and what they need to do at that point. But we truly believe that, um, you know, customers want that connection with the manufacturer and we want that connection with them and, and we want to grow together. When and where is that rally that Sagami and I will be emceeing I, for? I was just yeah. See, we don't even we don't even practice this stuff, Fred. We we even know the next logical sentence to. Hey, you can come out. We'll put you up in a fifth wheel right there with our uh, Columbus customers. So is this Columbus River Ranch? It's or? actually uh, the Forest River Frog Rally. Well, the Frog Rally. Oh, oh. We, haven't done, we haven't done the Frog Rally. Yeah. So, you know, within that rally, I mean, there's a lot of different brands and, and yeah. we want we want uh, Columbus to be uh, uh, the largest represented group there. You know? right, so, and then so, when I talk to Todd, my other GM, I want Puma to be the number one represented group there. And then when I talk to Ben, you know, one of the other GMs, I want his group to be the largest. So well, we might have a little bit of competition. there. Right, so if if we come out, Fred, you have to have. This is the guy that you always have at the open house. Yeah. See, I, I have to have elephant ears. So for those people who don't know what elephant ears is, we call it fried dough in New England. But if, if you're, if you're going to do a rally, you should definitely have elephant ears at the rally. Well, if you're going to come out there, we'll make sure that we do have elephant ears. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll get you a pound of dough and then you can cook it yourself. And yeah. I don't know if you want me cooking it, but I grill, <laughs> I do grill. Uh, do grill. I do, do grill. grill. Okay. Well, you know what? We're, we're, we'll get back we'll, to we'll, that. We'll watch let's, as people grill. Let's, let's let's get caught up so we don't uh, make sure we're yeah. not listening okay. to, go to uh, Ryan. Go to uh, Frank. Uh, go up to um, seven thirty nine. Maybe we'll. I've just, been there. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Like, you know, his uh, future wife is in New England. Yeah, That's see, right. See, Frank, when he comes to New England, he has a choice. I can go see Frank at the campground, or I can go see my bride and my family. family. Yes. And you lose every time, Frank. Sorry, Frank. I hate, hate to break it to you. All right. Go ahead. Don, we apologize. Again, you're, you're a little bit late, Don. For Christ's sake, it's it's uh <laughs> 7.45. You're a little right, bit right. late. He was on earlier, Bob. He was on earlier. Him, he's, he's in a different time zone. Yeah, he is. Okay, right. Ryan. Ryan has written a book here. The one, the one complaint I hear daily from customers is that once they buy their trailer, it's like they are forgotten about and they get frustrated about the lack of communication. Communication yep. is Willie's favorite word. I personally have seen that side of it get better within the last year or so. The industry wide, as far as communication, Willie, tell us your thought process on communication. It's good. <laughs> Well, you know, honestly, again, you guys, how many years have you two been doing this? Nine years. This is our ninth year for this. Right. So in nine years, customers now, because of social media, the internet, the transparency manufacturers can't hide from. Fred and I have had so many conversations about this. The entire RV industry is using about 80% of the same supply chain. Right. So where is the opportunity? What did you two tell me? It's the, the people. Last... Well, what's the people? People. But but what's amazing is that the opportunity, that opportunity of communicating with the vet is the least expensive thing you will have in your budget. All you got to do is talk to them. You don't need high pollutant systems. You don't need a lot of electricity. You don't need a lot of technology. All they're asking for is when I give you my money, how about if you give me some love on the other side? All right, Jim Roy, you're really late tonight. I think Fred had... Fred was ready to say something before. Uh, no, I was I was listening, but you know, 
um, your customer is actually, you know, hundred percent right. And those are the things that we're hundred percent focused on, you know, and, you know, when we say that, you know, we talk about a lot of things other than product, that is what we're talking about because, you know, we see that as a huge opportunity and, and, and something that, you know, we want to excel at, but, um, talks cheap, you know, have us on in a year and, and, and see where we're at. Yeah. We'll see. You know, I, yeah. Where, where in New England will the show be? Um, I'm not sure. Well, Boston is always in, but I'm not sure what you mean on a show, unless Willie's going to come in and do a show, you know, bring it. Bring it's up. our own show. <laughs> it's a, we'll, we'll do, we'll do a, a river ranch and a Columbus show. Yeah, dude. I'll tell you, we can do it right out there in Worcester. We got a nice hotel that you can put you up in and uh, introduce people. You know, we, we could do a cocktail reception, bring it, and we'd invite the dealers and let the dealers come in and take a look at it. And uh, you know, maybe you pick up a couple of quick dealers. Audrey says, interesting to hear that you want to engage in the end user in dealership. And we've used many for our rigs over the years, and they are not our friend. Well, that's, that's, you know, it's, that's a sad commentary, but that's the industry. It's it's you know, it it should never be that way. Uh, you know, it's the best way to take care of a customer is to talk to them. Dante says, I think he oh oh he meant the frog rally. Okay, so when is the frog rally, Fred? It's in August. Okay, what are the dates, Will? I, th I think eleventh through eleventh through seventeenth. Yeah. I believe it's 11th through the 17th. If you just Google 2024 Frog Rally, they yeah. have uh, done a great job putting together a, uh, you know, a great, you know, okay. all the information. Actually, actually, you guys, you know, on the Wednesday of the Frog Rally, you ought to come out and we can do the uh, Columbus River Ranch right in our. Uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. Well, but that's yeah. what we did. We, that's what we did a couple years ago with Alliance. We did a show right from one of their units. Yeah, so we, you can do it. You can do it out there in August. We'll put you yes. up in one. And the that, only pay we have to we, give John yeah, we, to is popcorn. Uh, I, I I love the way you think. Bring my own, Willie. Right. We could we do our being in New England, which is a national show. We just didn't think we'd have that much success, but we could do it from one of the units straight from the Frog Rally. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Now let's let's bring up one thing here that we talked about in the beginning, and and now our now our audience is starting to say that there are dealers that have the attitude that the sale ends when the client signs on the dotted line, and there are dealers, and I think and manufacturers, and I think that that Willie and Fred exemplify the kind that the relationship begins when the person signs on the dotted line, because up to that, it, it's all exhibition. I mean, the real work comes when the person picks up the unit and starts to use it. All that other stuff is just pregame stuff, right? Right, yeah, and and to Steve's point, Steve's on Gail's phone because Steve, we've been having some connection problems with Steve that we're trying to get Facebook to fix for us, but that is music to my ears. And, and Steve and Gail have had issues with their coach. Audrey has had some significant issues. And there is, and I say it to my dealers, it's, it's not something I just say on the show. There is no excuse for not taking care of that customer. It's, it's, it's number one, it's suicide. It's ridiculous. Well, it's, they're going to tell somebody else about it. And it's going to cost you sales on that side, too. Uh, Frank said, oh, really? Willie loves to communicate. If you do not believe me, get him on the phone. <laughs> well, he's, he, 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 I had to talk to him before the show, Frank, but he's done very well. I'm, I'm proud of you, Willie. I'm, I'm, you, you really done a nice job controlling that and not popping out. Uh, Ryan Chef Boyardee. Well, that's, that's what they said. No, no, no. He, that was in reference to pay to Petro with with popcorn. Oh, okay. No, it's Chef Boyardee. Right. Steve is no, still banned. I don't, I don't know. We'll have to, to uh, Portillo's. We'll have, we'll have to figure that one out. No, uh, the, no. What's that place in Chip Shawana there? The Blue 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 the Blue Gate. Blue Gate. Blue Gate. Yeah. 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 They're the best buffet in in Elkhart. No question about it. So this this is that's the uh, Columbus. 
And I thought this was interesting. And what caught my eye here, again, I think you can do that much with that room because you have seven foot ceiling. So if you look at the bunks on the right, you get two bunks, but you still got a desk where in most trailers or fifth wheels, you'd only have two on the right. Now, so you got two on the right and you got one folding, one on the left. Talk about the, the bunk room and, and what percentage of your people in the Columbus are you, are you seeing as families? Whoops, what do I do? Who wants to take so, it? That's what we're kind of building out right now is just getting up to speed. In the last two weeks, um, we've done five, or excuse me, we've done three uh, live videos with the Columbus Owners Group. So again, 3,700 current Columbus members on that page asking these questions, you know, because, you know, for us, and, and I really appreciate kind of Fred's leadership in this is, you know, instead of us just creating or seeing a competitor and what they do, we don't want to care about what they're doing. We have our own unique story. We have our own patent. So if you have the tallest ceiling, how else can you utilize that to bring value to a customer? Well, obviously with more ceiling height, you have more room to maybe run cabinetry all the way to the ceiling. The big thing that in just two weeks we haven't talked enough about and just communicating to dealers are, okay, we get the seven foot ceilings, but the fact that you're at six foot five ceiling height in every entryway, you're, we're so used to walking in a fifth wheel and like ducking through that transition. I'm six three, I don't have to duck. It, it, it is the most residential feel coach. I'm not pitching anything, but I invite people, you walk in it. And so we're spending a lot of time just saying, you know, we need eyes in, in, in humans to go in and touch and feel and look and say, hey, you know what, Fred, Will, we didn't realize Columbus and what we could do now. So we have been getting so much feedback just coming out of the woodwork so we're trying to assess and then say, okay, do we have enough feedback to justify, you know, implementing something in, in our floor plan for 2025? This really, to me, and I've said this to Fred, the entire history of Columbus, to me, it's a line in the sand. We now have full liberty to go out and, and build out a dealer network, have a relationship with owners. For the first time in a long time, nothing against the people in the past, but we are transparent. We're going live, we're taking communication. And this is the first kind of test kitchen to see, are we really utilizing our patent when so few people don't even know the brand yet? So that's what's so exciting is, you know, how many floor plans could we have? You know, well, I asked Freddie, so well, like, speak, speak about you know, if they're buying. <laughs> yeah. When, uh, you know, KOA just came out with the 2024 Camping and Hospitality Report, and Toby does a, an amazing job uh, putting that out there. And I, I confess, and I, I say to all my dealers, every sales rep in this industry should be reading the KOA Camping and Outdoor Hospitality Report because that is our customer. So one of the big things in the report this year, and it keeps building every year, and then Outdoorsy also issued a report this week that really talks to the amount of people that – are being socially mobile. They can work from the road. The one thing COVID did, which is great, and we all took advantage of it from a sales standpoint, but now we've got people that are full-timing out there a long time. What are you doing to accommodate the, the family or the person that has to have an office in the coach, independent office, as, as we see more people working in, while the kids are out in the swimming pool or cooking hot dogs? So is that another way of asking what we're doing for 2025? You're too damn smart, Fred. <laughs> Listen, Fred. I'm really glad you joined us tonight. It's your first time on our viewing in New England. It'll probably be your last time. No. <laughs> that's um, exactly, that's exactly we, what it was. Yeah, yeah, but you're absolutely right. I mean, there's a lot of customers out there looking for that, and and we're looking at ways to you know multi-use space and and um, you know when people. You know, we had some visitors just the other day, you know, you sleep in a bed for eight hours and then, you know, the rest of the day, it's it's a bed. Can you use that in a, you know other ways? So we will, 
you know, we'll come up with some creative ways of, of doing some things and, and accommodating, you know, people that are that are on the move and, and working and living and playing. Um, and to your point earlier about, you know, that rear bunk room and the space, you know, that our fifth wheels, um, you know, contain and, and what you're able to do in it. I got a picture of Will. Have you ever seen a, a one of the lofts in any of the fifth wheels out there? I mean, you know, you, you yeah, end just, up with like two foot of, of bed space. You I've know, just, before. And I've seen the, the, yeah. the, one, the one in the outlaw that's up over yeah. the garage. They actually yeah, I got a picture of, of Will up in a loft in one of our units, you know, uh, you know hanging out up there and, and seeing how there? that worked out for him. Wow. He fit Disclosure, up in the last two weeks, the amount of work that I've been doing now – I've actually lost weight, so I look like a little slim fella up there in the upper deck. <laughs> hey, Bob, we only have three minutes left, but we have three three big questions here. Time. Give me um, time. Go to Audrey at uh, 753. Three. Yep, I'll read it. I'll read it quick. Uh, we love the layout. What, do you, what about the steps leading into the rig look like for grandkids and a dog and – a little old gal. Uh, how how steep are those steps in order to get that? Uh, there you go. Just a, just a, about a foot more, an extra step, three, four steps. So, so again, the, the the steps are not any more dramatic in size. Actually, again, credit to Ron Brown, our engineer. They're actually a lower transitional depth uh, than normal fifth wheels. So I would just simply invite you to go and see for yourself at any of our authorized dealers. Uh, but it's not daunting. It's it's a very comfortable transition step, and it's actually a lower profile credit to our engineering. So from one tread to the next, it's shorter without both of our brands, Columbus and River Ranch, than what you traditionally see. Yeah, when they first came out with it, and I did that spot for rolling on TV, I worked with Ron on that. What I, what I like about this staircase, and correct me if I'm wrong if I uh, do it, is when you open the door, you're not going right into another step. So it's almost like you got a little foyer. Am I seeing that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so where, where you see the fire extinguisher, yeah, our engineer actually designed a spot to put the shoes. So the amount of dirt traffic in, in a river ranch is like, because that becomes like your mudroom. Yep. yep. If you so choose to not wear shoes throughout the country. Don't miss anybody yeah. here. Let's see. Now, another thing, um, oh, Gail had asked, can we tour the factory? So Katie Johnson must be one of your people there, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So Katie said, yes, you can. Katie, thank you so much for uh, spending the time with that. Just well, to show we'll, you how we'll, oil. Hey, Will, yeah, you, you better buy her some flowers tomorrow. She tolerated you for the entire hour and said nothing. Until the customer had a, had a response and she responded to it. You can certainly come for the tours. Columbus service. Thank you, Katie. Mr. Oh, Mr. Murray. Just tell, got done. tell our people who he is. Rand, Randy Murray is the director of services. Actually, customer, all the customer engagements at Pete's RV up in Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut. Uh, in Pennsylvania, Ohio. down in South Carolina, and uh, Vermont, Vermont, yeah, yeah. So, Randy, you're late. Uh -huh. But Katie, Katie, um, she said she texted Willie to fix his hair. Did, did she do that, Willie? She him. does. So, <laughs> Katie is. So Katie, uh, he obviously didn't listen to you. So, Katie is part of our customer service team that does not. Um, uh, hold her thoughts in and she says things exactly how she feels. Um, and uh, we really do appreciate her. She's already, you know, when I got hired and it was announced, she immediately introduced and connected herself with my fiance. Uh, she's done a background check. She's very thorough. And um, like I said, she has no problem. She did, fun of she did the, the background check after you got hired. Excuse me. She did the background check after you got hired. Yeah, so when I came in, I said, hi, I'm Will Miller. She goes, I know all about you. You're engaged. Your wedding's coming up. I, I really like your fiance. Um, you're very lucky to have her. And I hope that you work out and you don't fail. I'm like, thanks. 
So that's that's Katie. But uh, where's my desk? Was that, was, that, was, that, was, that fa- was that failing at the marriage or failing at selling Columbus and River Inch? Both. Well, she just said, if I fail the marriage, I'm an idiot. So um, there you she's, go. Uh, oh. She's Kim been uh, wonderfully Kim. honest with me uh, every yeah. single day. Right. Yeah, we're wonderfully over because uh, we got to switch it over to uh, to uh, uh, Waters. Uh, who did yeah. I Waters? Uh, we got uh, Tim's RV what? is out in uh, Irving, Mass. On Route Two, beautiful Mohawk Trail. I, I'll bet you're gonna have fun with the the, uh, the River Ranch, Tim. I bet you're gonna have some real fun with that. And yeah. Becky Beam, Katie Rock. Right. So, so Tommy, yeah, do, you, do, do you have any more members of your fan club that you tipped off to watch the show tonight? Well, <laughs> look, you know, I as I said, you know, you guys are the ones that told me Mr. Getter said you're the bad boys from Boston, but you two yeah. have also since the moment I got in this industry, you know, off the record, you guys have told me to do the things that Fred has told me to do: focus okay. on the people we serve. Focus on the customers that they will be your best advocates and the product will speak for itself. Yep. yep. We'll do it. And, uh, right. We've got to speak for, for Saco RV, for uh, Seacoast RV. And we want to thank you so much. We will follow up tomorrow. Okay, okay. Tim, see, see, Tim Smart. Yes, that is the same Willie Miller, Tim. He has gone over to the good side and he's <laughs> responsible for Columbus and River Ranch fifth wheels. To do that, and Becky, uh, and we invite everybody to come and have a tour. Wait, Becky says she answered a question earlier, and I didn't, didn't get see it. We don't usually miss them, Becky. I apologize. I don't, I don't yeah. see it. But we're running over, and uh, we want to. Over, we've run over. We've Willie, we'll get you. Over. We'll get to you tomorrow on the uh, Frog Rally. Hey guys, oh, thank you very good. much, Fred, Fred. Thank you for taking the time. Glad that we could introduce you to people in New England. And uh, Willie, you know you're always welcome. We here. appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for your honesty. Have a great day. Thanks. See you all next week. We appreciate your your coming to watch the show. <laughs> you're right. This edition of our being in New England was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.